everyone. Uh, welcome to another Facebook Live Q and A with Jim. How are you, Jim? Yeah, I'm good. That's good. All right. Before we start getting rolling, I'll start with a few announcements. So, uh, the other day on the Facebook page, if you follow Jim's uh, group head office, uh, you will see that there's a new division. Uh, Jim's personal training is now partnered with the AFLW. Yeah, which good, is, good one. Great which, division. Love which, this one. Which is a great partnership. So that was announced yesterday. So head over to Jim's personal training. Um, give them a like or follow them to, be, to see those notifications and how that partnership with the AFLW transforms, and it's going to be a great one. And Jim's mobile, uh, mobile mechanics. So Jim's mobile mechanics, mm. I think, will start early May. Um, so head over to their Facebook page to be keep informed about that. I know mobile, mobile mechanics is a great one for us moving forward, and we're going to have – I think we've already got a lot of interest in that one. So Yes. Yeah, they've got five franchisors on the go. Yeah, five, five people already want to do region. So mm. make sure you head over to the Jim's Mobile Mechanics page, give them a like, a follow, and inquire about that one because we think that one's going to be huge. But we're there, the two things. And tonight, basically, as we know, best question or comment, which Jim will pick at the end, hang around to the end, can I have their choice of one of these and a signed copy from Jim? So basically, best one at the end, Jim will announce. The question then, I like the best. The question he likes the best, we'll announce it. And then at the end of the session, and then basically um, send us through your details, and I'll make sure Jim signs it, and we'll post it out to you. And also make sure you follow Jim on Instagram and Twitter. So the handles are always at Jim underscore Penman for Instagram. On Twitter, it's Jim Penman 2 And we have, obviously, the Facebook page, which is Jim Penman Official. People have been sending DMs and stuff via that, and we have been showing them to Jim. So we do send all the messages get seen by Jim as well. Yep. So if you do take the trouble to message Jim on one of those platforms, Jim does see it, and we do try and interact with everyone. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We've got around 20 people tuning in now. Hello to everyone, and thanks for letting us know you're here. So we've got Sal, John. Hey, Jim and Joel. Hi, Sal. Jonathan Gleason has joined. Hi, John. I hope everything's well, mate. Owen Bradford. Owen Brandwood, sorry. Hey, Jim and Joel. Jonathan Gleason's gone. What keeps you awake at night? I think we asked this one last time. What keeps you awake at night, Jim? Real briefly, <laughs> we asked this one last time. Well, um, I, my mind's always active. I never stop thinking about the business, that's for sure. I, I even dream about it sometime in the night. I'm just dreaming about something going wrong or something I should do. And, yeah, it's in my mind the whole time. But let's, it's fun. Business is like that. It's something you're always thinking about. And Sharon Connell's tuned in. Tuned in. Hey, guys. Yeah, so Sharon. Sharon is our dog wash divisional, an absolute gun with franchising and everything. She's a, she's a legend. She Sharon. is a legend in the gym system. Okay, so Nathan Lovell here has gone, what's the best thing you like about your business, Jim? Oh, it's just... It's, it's, it's tremendously fun. It's like a fascinating computer game that keeps on going. But the thing, the thing that gets me the biggest buzz is, is talking to a franchisee who's been successful. Like I was talking about this guy, Shane. He's tuned in. Shane, there is Shane. There is Shane there. Oh, that, that makes my – or when I can do something to help somebody, that's just a real buzz. I mean, ultimately, our whole goal is to make our franchisees happy. And I'm, that's not totally altruistic because if our franchisees are happy, we're going we're gonna to grow. But – that's what gives me personally the greatest satisfaction. And welcome to Shane again. Uh, Shane was got a big pump up last week, so that was uh, it makes yeah. Jim's week, which is good for us. If Jim's happy, it makes us happy as well, so that's a good thing. So Joseph Quinn via Facebook di uh, direct message goes, how do you rebut customers complaining about price? Now, this is an interesting one. Yeah. Well, you've got to be confident in the price too. I mean, if you, if you go to a customer and say, oh, look, I know it's an awful lot, but, you know, I'm afraid it's such a big job and stuff like that, you don't do that. Oh, you say, oh, look, that's okay. I could do it for so-and-so. No problem at all. You'd like them to get started, something like that. Um, if anybody was to talk about the price and you say, look, we, we don't, we're not the cheapest. We don't aim to be the cheapest. We want to be the best. But when you get the gym's job done, there's a unlimited work guarantee behind it. There's police checks. There's insurance. People, people go for these reasons. But we're not going to try and compete if you just want the cheapest price. But what we do is great value. Is that, it's actually interesting, one of the uh, not uncommon complaints is you get a, a survey through where the uh, client's saying, oh, it was a lousy job, it was terrible. But it turns out they picked somebody else, and when they realise that, they say, oh, yeah, okay, well, I will get you guys next time. <laughs> so there you go. Thanks for that question, Joseph. So another one from last week, which follows on with the statistics we did in promoting last week's Facebook Live was about the mowing and the failure rates of clean with the independent business statistics from those associations in America. So it's via a handle called It's Profitable, which was via Jim's Instagram, which mm. he says, in response to, to the statistics mentioned last week, why is the number of failed businesses so high? It's, it's very difficult to start a business from scratch. Basically, first of all, because you don't know what you're doing, and secondly, because 
it's very hard to find enough clients. Once you've got an established business, once you know what you're doing, it's not difficult even for an independent to have a good ongoing steady business. But getting going is good. Very close friend of mine in my Bible study was a, um, a Sparky electrician and uh, he's a very capable guy with great work ethic and everything else, but he just couldn't get started. That, that's typically what happens. I mean, I, I didn't get start full time. I was doing it part time for years. I started off working $1.50 an hour back in, in like 1970. And I just gradually increased and learned a bit. And I was doing it as a student job, so there was no pressure. So by the time I came to start full time, I've been doing this thing for 12 years. So I knew what I was doing. So when, when I talk about the 24 bucks, you've got to recognize it wasn't just 24 bucks. It was 12 years of experience behind it. So just in relation to this one about price, I'll, there's a franchisee's question on here by Aaron Putty. You just said we're not the cheapest, but we are the best. Yet you survey us and penalize us on price through surveys. Question mark. We don't penalize you on price. We just mark it. The clients, clients never see that. And we never, we never pay any attention to it internally. You know, if you've got a 4.8 star rating, $3 signs is fantastic. We're okay with that. We're great on it. The, the only thing, we, we might use the price to actually indicate, okay, let's, let's take a situation where a franchisee is not converting very well. And um, they're saying we're short of work, and they're all they're all tire kickers. And we just point out to them that you know, on average, you're about in the bottom third or or worse of franchisees in terms of getting price knocked back. So maybe you need to learn to be more efficient so that you can actually quote a somewhat more moderate price. I'm not I'm not wanting you to be cheap. And if you've got stacks of work, great, charge what you like. But if you're short of work because because you you are expensive which may be because you're slow, then it's worth us knowing that. But you'll never get criticised for it. I have never, ever, ever criticised. If I, if I see somebody with a poor star rating, how do I fix it? But if I see somebody with a high price rating, not a problem. So thanks for that comment for that one, Aaron. That led into that well. So I'll go for another one of these pre-given to us questions. So thanks to everyone for tuning in and giving us a like and letting us know you're here. There's a lot of people tuning in now. There's around 51 people. So welcome to everyone. Mm. So Shane Stewinges, he's a franchisee in mowing via Facebook, goes, with emissions and noise both being byproducts of our role in mowing, are you satisfied with the advancements in battery technology and how could the cost best be reduced in the technology to make it viable option? Regards, Shane. Uh, well, batteries just aren't there now. I've actually got a, a battery-powered mower. I've got an AEG, which I use up on my farm, just to cut the grass up there. <laughs> to be honest, it takes me three batteries to actually mow the whole place. So I, even though some of our contractors use them, the battery technology is not quite there for most uses. But having said that, I, I love this machinery. I've got a, a brush cutter and stuff too. Um, because it's so quiet and it's easy to start and there's low maintenance and low vibration and, and it's great stuff. When, when the batteries become better, I, I would hope our guys would be shifting across in scale. I mean, they're great machines. They're a bit more expensive, but, but, main, but they don't wear out so quickly. It's like, it's like electric cars, actually. When electric cars start coming in a big way, a lot of mechanics are going to go out of business because they just don't, I said my mechanics, but I suppose there'll be, other, there'll be things to do. But they don't require as much work as a as a um, as a internal combustion engine. So quiet, low maintenance, cheap to run. You don't have to buy fuel. You can recharge the batteries. It'll be great when the battery technology improves, and it's getting better all the time. Give us another five years, and I think a lot of our guys will be on on um, battery powered stuff. Thanks for that question, Shane. That was really good. So here's another one here. So from Hack Your Way Out is the Instagram handle via Instagram. He's asked, which book is your favourite, Jim? Oh, there's so many. I just finished reading it. And this wonderful new biography, actually talking book by about um, Winston Churchill, The Last Lion. Um, Everybody Lies is a fantastic book about um, about the, what you can learn from the internet and from not Google searches and so forth. Actually, I'm just at the moment listening to one... Um, which is called um, Barking Up the Wrong Tree. It's, it's about leadership and, and what sort of, what sort of behaviours create good leaders, which to me is interesting. I, I love the James Collins book about good to great, built to last, um, why businesses fail. I could just keep on going. I, I love books. I, I, I listen to or read a lot, and I, and I just love them as a way of learning and, and being inspired too. Stories about people like there's a wonderful book called Buffett CEOs about 
the, the private businesses that, that Buffett rang. People often talk about retirement and so forth. And one of the great things that come out of that book is that Buffett was a legendary picker of managers. And, and at the stage this book was written, most of his managers were over retirement age. And, and one of the best was over 100. So, you know, there's just so many good things out there. There's wonderful things out there. I love reading news magazines too. I love economists and, and new scientists too. How many books do you consume a week? Is it an audio version, maybe one a week? Yeah, probably one to two a week. Yeah. yeah. So, ma absolute massive appetite for it. So, I'll just run through some of the comments and stuff here because a few people have taken the time to leave them. So, Sean Daly's gone, hey, bros, got a house inspection tomorrow, new business for you. Well, Jim's Real Estate does property management. So, maybe someone from Jim's Real Estate is coming out to do the property inspection. Jason Pollock says, hey, Jim and Joel. Hi, Jason. Mm. Priori Victoria, I know you tuned in last week, says, how much cash do I need to start a business with gyms? It's a very open-ended question. Yeah. Look, it can be as little as $10,000 and, and it can be as much as a quarter million. It really depends on where you are and what you're doing. It's best to look at the particular business. But if you're interested, you can actually acquire about a number of different divisions and see what's available. So Alex has said hi. Kevin's tuned in and said hi from New Zealand. And Joshua Elms has tuned in again and says, hey, Jim and Joel, so thanks for tuning Good in again, guys. Sal John has gone for the question is, what, what has made you be more active on social media? Well, this, mm. this guy actually, I've got somebody, I don't, frankly, it's not my thing. I, I don't even use Facebook or anything myself, but um, Joel's come up through the ranks. He's uh, taken this initiative and it's something we, somewhere we need to be. Oh, I like this kind of stuff and talking, talking to her responses is, is good. But So what we do... Sal, I've, I've been here for eight years and I've, I hear this stuff that Jimmy are talking about now every day, right? We never really captured it. And an easy way to capture it and to translate it out to people is via social media, so via an Insta, via a Facebook page and via YouTube, all that sort of stuff. So content, we're in the age of content now. Um, you know, so Jim did an interview with Founder last week and they're basically, the whole business platform is building content and then driving people to their website to then buy courses and eBooks and stuff like that. So we're on the age of video content. People who follow, follow Gary V and... Gary Vaynerchuk and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm not saying we're at that level at all, but we're just trying to capture as much content as possible because Jim has got a lot of interesting stuff that we need to get out there. So social for us is a very easy platform for us to do it. And if you like this type of stuff, keep tuning in, let us know, and we'll keep doing it. So I'll keep running down here for more people tuning in. Caleb's tuned in again. Hi, Caleb. Hope you're well. Okay, James Parker's gone. What's your favourite franchise? Question mark. <laughs> like choosing a kid, I guess. Uh, well, I'm a mowing contractor. Yeah. I, I mowed lawns and did gardening for a long time, and, 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 I, and I love it. I still enjoy gardening, so I, I guess my heart still bleeds green, as we used to say in the old days. But yeah. there's, there's a lot of wonderful divisions out there. It's a matter of doing what you love. I mean, I'm a person that loves the outdoors. I was just out this afternoon outside just digging in, in the garden. I just enjoy it. Um, Different people like different things. I know some people that Haydar was saying you can't believe anybody go out mowing lawns when they should be cleaning because it's so much a better <laughs> job because you're inside. So <laughs> that's true. So, so I just run down here, Bob Ellis. Is I love personal in. training, though, I, I love to because I really believe in fitness. That's I'm very excited about personal training and this this hookup with the um, AFLW, AFL yeah. is yeah. Yeah, FW is is is, is wonderful because I think fitness has so much to do with mood. People are so anxious and depressed and, and I think one of the reasons my mood is so positive is that I, I, I stay fit. I always get good exercise. How many kilometres do you run in the morning? I run I run five normally. Five in the morning and at your age that's pretty remarkable. It's not not difficult at all. Right. Well, I think so to anybody too, don't push it too hard. Like I've got my daughters, I'm encouraged my 17 year old to do it and she, she can't run as fast. I said don't worry about it, just run, walk a bit run, get used to it, don't push yourself, don't risk injuries. It's, um, but exercise is really important. And it's not just a matter of having that, that time of day. Half an hour a day is good, is really good, but even be active the rest of the time. Like I actually, my house is next to the office and I walk back and forth several times a day and I walk around the office and, I, and when I walk in, in shopping centres, I tend to try and run if I can. It's hit people oh, are getting in the way. Really? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a bit of a nutcase, I know. Even through town, I go running through the city. I just like being active. I'll never take the escalator if I can take the stairs. I'll never take a lift if I can take the stairs. I just like, I just love to be active. That's very true. I've seen you a few times if you're late for something. I've seen you running up. There's a path behind. There's a massive hill, and I'll see you sprinting up there sometimes or coming down if you're late for something. So that's right. It's very true. So I'll just run through a few more of the comments here. Thanks for tuning in. Let us know you're here for like or with a comment or a question. We'll try and get to as much as we can. 
Rob Ellis has gone high, guys. Ann Atkinson has gone high. Jim and Joel from the other end of the country. Jim's bookkeeping. So thanks for tuning in, Ann. Welcome aboard. Joshua Lums has gone, will security division ever do security guards? Have it's, we done? Yeah. It would be a different division entirely. It'd be a different security division. Security is, yeah. is all to do with, with the electronic stuff and, and, uh, and they're, they're very closely related to antennas because it's the same sort of skills. In fact, a lot of guys do both. Security guards. Jim's bouncers. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you do Jim's bouncers. Yeah, give, give them fake beards so they can fake beards. out of here. Fake beards in the hat and they'll be right. look pretty tough. Yeah. Like sunnies. Yeah, that'll be... Look, we'd... we'd, we'd We'd, we'd do it, I guess, if um, if we had the... What, what you need in any division, it's not so much we decide to do a division, is we come across somebody who is in that industry and understands it and they, and they know how it works. And and the kind of thing that I did in my in my 12 years of, of mowing lords before I started part-time, full-time, is, is if you know the industry and you know what's going on, you know how to find work and you know what to charge, and then we link that industry knowledge with the, our customer service systems and franchise systems and communications and IT and all the rest of it, and, and social media too. It's mm. a good question. I just want to ask this one here. Caleb, Caleb Templeman vlogs and texts gone, Jim, does anyone come up to you and say hi when they see you in public? They don't recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even lately, I suppose, a little bit more. Um, but no, actually, some people look at the – they say um, – you know, you're with Jim's, are you? And I say, uh, yeah, I am. They say, what division are you with? I'm, I'm, I'm sort of at the head office. <laughs> I don't really tell anybody. <laughs> they haven't said who you are. So, Hado Hussein's tuned in. It's gone, hi, gents. Enjoying the show still in Cyprus. Oh, wow. Fully energised and ready to get back into it. So, Hado is our cleaning divisional. He's an absolute gun. And we are glad to hear you enjoying your holiday. No, he's, a, he's a top guy, Hado. He's good. So, Caleb Templeman's gone. When will there be a Jim's News? Question mark. Jim's News Station, we need it. I don't think we'd have enough content. Um, no. Yeah, we always get Jim's Jim flicks and we're good at services. Yeah. We we focus on the things. It seems like we do everything, but in fact, we're one of the most narrowly focused businesses in the world. We focus on going out. Somebody contacts us for a service, and we go out and offer it. And whether it's bookkeeping or mowing or security, it doesn't matter what it is. It's all the same. It, it's it's the same kind of business. But doing something like a a, a uh, say retail franchising even at that level or a or a news business is an extremely different kind of business and one of the things I've learned is I'm not very clever I don't do things well just for the sake of doing them well and the kind of stuff I've gone into which is different doesn't tend to work as well so we, we tend to focus on what we're good at hi there it's a good question there so I'll just run down a few more here and I'll get to a couple of questions from the sheet um, Kevin Dupree's has gone hi Jim when are you going to come visit us in Auckland NZ so franchisee of Sort of. Well, yeah, I, uh, when I have a reason, I suppose. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't travel a lot. I'm not a crazy traveller. Um, I went over to Perth recently because um, of the tragedy that happened last year and, and I wanted to talk to the franchisees there and, you know, get their feelings from it. So if I have a reason, I'll go. Sometimes the people pay me a lot of money to go and give a talk. I'll go there and I'll be happy to meet the franchisees at the same time. But the funny thing about it is that when I have travelled into state, I might go to a meeting and I might meet you know, 10 or 20 guys. I don't get a lot of response. But by being here and being available, any franchisee can ring me, can email me any time. And, and because I'm not always travelling, I've always got time to talk to people. So it's kind of, yeah, I, I'm, my biggest focus is that I'm personally available. And, and even today, there's been a whole stack of franchisees or franchisors just approached me about different issues, probably you know, 20 or 30 people with, with different reasons, you know, like interpretations of contracts or to do with complaints or to do with the policy, the intestine tag. There's a whole lot of stuff going on with that. Um, just different things all the time. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. So I'll just run down a few comments. There's a lot of people leaving comments and questions, which is great. As I said, if I don't get to them this week, we'll back mm. them up for next week. There's a lot of really good content in there and we appreciate you taking the time to do it. So Jim's meaning is going, get a Jim's World Tour. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't think Jim would like that one too well, Jim's meaning. A bit I don't like travelling very much. I honestly yeah. don't. I'm, I'm a notorious travel phobe, so I have to have a good reason. So there's a good question here from Jason Pollock. He's gone, hey, Jim and Joel, what is the biggest challenge you have found when mentoring franchisees? Oh, it's it's just the hardest thing is where people don't want to listen. They They... You try and tell them what they should do, and they just tell you, "No, no, you're wrong, Jim." You know, I, I had one cleaning franchise. He once he just drove me mad. He was trying to 
tell me everything was wrong with the business and, and he wasn't doing the real basic stuff that he's supposed to do like the the, the free services paperwork guarantee and it was very frustrating because he's a guy who's been going a few weeks and he's failing his franchise has been in the industry 20 years i've been obviously around a, a while we're both advising him to do something and he won't listen i mean there's not many like that actually but it's it's very upsetting to see somebody fail because they won't follow i mean our failure rate is not that high um i think i mentioned last week it, about around about 10 percent typically fail in the first year which is very very low for a business but but those who do fail it's usually because they just won't listen or they keep on doing stupid things you know why would you not ring a client properly and then follow up with a text if you can't get through that's so simple but you wouldn't believe how many complaints we get or when you send a quote followed up with a phone call or at least a text how simple is that but today i was going through the complaints and I saw this happening again and again and again. I didn't get a quote. I didn't get a call. It's 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 maddening, actually. It's really, really difficult because it's not rocket science. It's not that difficult. Anybody should be able to do this. You don't need a giant brain to be successful in business. You need just the ability to follow a system and to understand that we're not doing this because we're control freaks. We're doing it because if you can't get through and you've texted somebody, you'll you'll get the job and you won't get a complaint and if you do get a complaint i'll take it off you personally but getting people to do that is so difficult sometimes but that's not most most of my franchisees are great they really give great service our, our average average star rating is like 4.5 and and uh, that includes people who are you know yeah, much lower than that. It's a great question, Jason. Thanks for that one. So I'll get back to a couple on the sheet that was submitted prior. We've got 55 eyes watching now. That's great. Let us know you're here for like, a comment, or question. We appreciate you taking the time to tune in. Samantha Lamb via Facebook Messenger. So this is via direct messenger. So thank you, for Samantha. Hi, Jim. With two of your biggest passions being science and religion, do you find yourself struggling between the evolution versus biblical theories? And if so, how does it affect your research? Um, I don't see any conflict. I, I, I mean, I actually go to a church where people believe that the world was <coughs> created six and a half thousand years ago, but I think that's not, not on. The world's about four billion years old. The universe is just under 14 billion years old. Evolution is a fantastic theory. But, you know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a creationist. God did it all, in, in my view. But he just took a bit longer than some people think. And I, I think to understand the Bible properly, it's not really a scientific account. It wasn't written as a scientific account. It wasn't meant to be understood as a scientific account. It's a theological account. It's a story of God's sovereignty. So absolutely no contradiction at all. In fact, what my science tells me is that Christianity has a point. Everything that's taught in Christian teaching, including elements that are less popular these days, like chastity, actually has a profound point from an evolutionary point of view. It changes character in a way that helps people to be successful. Great question, Sam, and thanks for sending that one through. I love that, love that question. So Paul Donahue as well via Facebook as well is gone. Hi, Jim. With the federal election due probably mid next month, what do you think are the key issues that should be debated in the lead up? Also, is there anything specific to Jim's group or any of its divisions that you feel will be impacted? So it's a pretty big question, that one. <sighs> I'll fire up that one. I, I, do have a, I do have a concern with debt, I must say. I, I, I having the government borrow more and more money all the time and not be prepared to raise taxes enough to cover it worries me a great deal. Um, I, I wish we could come to terms with that. I gather there's a narrow surplus going right now, which is mainly because the taxes keep on going up because of bracket click creep, but I would like to see that. Um, I don't know. It's, I know it's a strange thing to say, but uh, we, we're probably better off if Labor wins which they almost certainly will because they're not quite so good on economic management. And we've at the moment, we find it very easy to find clients, not so easy to find franchisees. So a bit of a recession would do us some good. So uh, you know, Bill Shorten, come on and put the, put us, put it. <laughs> Jim Scrub has no political affiliation. Or no, it away. doesn't. It doesn't. And I, uh, I, 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 vote, I vote my conscience, <laughs> which is not necessarily what my business would be best for my business. So sorry about that, but anyway, that's my view. Thanks for the question, Paul. <laughs> it's all good. It's honesty. It's all funny. It's live. It's good. All right, so I'll run through a few of the people here who left comments and stuff. Thank you. We appreciate it very much. 
Jonathan Gleason has gone, Jim, what will you be getting Joel for his birthday tomorrow? Your birthday's tomorrow. Apparently it is. Apparently. Are you <laughs> getting me a cake? What are you getting me? Some flowers? I don't what do any of this stuff. No, I know. I know. Staff members bring stuff in and they, they set something That's up true. and I say, whose birthday is it? So I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, turning, not, I'm turning 21 tomorrow, Jonathan. Remembering my, remembering my kids' birthdays is good. I put that all in my, in my phone and it <laughs> reminds me apart from that. I remember my wife's birthday because it's two days after Christmas, which is the same as my mother's. So that's easy. But it's not my strongest point. So to answer me. your question, Jonathan, nothing. Zero. Nothing. It'd be zero. Now, what I'm going to give Joel for his birthday is a fantastic job and the opportunity to do lots of exciting stuff. Oh, exactly and that's right. not just on his birthday. That's every day. Every day. Every day. There you the go. Year. There that's you go, Jonathan. Right. That's the best. That's, maybe, the, that's the best present you can give somebody. Maybe you can give me some of your fresh milk from your dairy, Jonathan. That would be better. I might give you some eggs occasionally. Yeah, eggs. Eggs to go for milk that, would that be no worries. That tend to produce too many eggs. No worries. Yeah. Sal John's gone, well done. You're doing a good job. Thanks, Sal. Um, I'll keep going down here. Alex is gone. Jim, what's your greatest strength? Let's say as a person or in business, what's your greatest strength? Um... I've got a passion for customers, which particularly for us is franchisees. And uh, in, in all due modesty, I'm pretty creative. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I've always been like that. Whenever, whenever anybody comes up with two normal ways of doing things, I'll, I'll think of three more on the spot. I was like that, which is why my academic career got killed because I was just too different. And, and what we do in business is very unorthodox in gyms. It's things like the ability to move regions and to vote out franchisors and have franchisees veto manuals. And we do a lot of stuff which is very, very unusual that nobody else does. And I'm always coming up with innovations. I mean, most of my ideas are pretty crappy, obviously. <laughs> they don't work out too well. But just mm. occasionally one does actually turn out quite well. No, Jimmy's full of ideas. We um. Yeah, yeah. We have great discussions in the evening, we, mm. especially when we just chew the fat and say, why don't we do this? And then, and then yes, of course, I just have the great idea and then Joel has to do all the work. That's but, correct. Uh, uh, ideas are cheap. Implementation is hard and expensive. Yeah, That's yes, the problem. That, is, that is true. But Jimmy's full of a lot of ideas. Mm. Patrick Butler, who's gone, hi, guys. I've noticed a lot of leads now are going dead due to Facebook Marketplace, for example. I had one the other day and called within 20 minutes and was told that she'd already got someone off Facebook. What are your thoughts on this? This is a great question. Well, it's a very serious issue with competitors. We don't take it lightly. We haven't seen any effect so far. In fact, the, the volume of unserviced leads is rising ridiculously fast. It's, it's our single major customer service problem. There's so many customers we can't handle. So, but we, we do take it very, very seriously. Um, there's a system that um, we've set up, been running for the last year or so, which is... Um, people know about, which is uh, formerly GoBlitz, about to be rebranded as Jim's Plus, in which we're actually looking to sell our unserviced leads on a platform that, that where the, all the ratings are shown. Because we've been having ratings for our franchisees for the last three years. We've got a lot of information on that. So we want to set up a system whereby quality independence can be shown as well. And what we want to do is to get the money from that and then use that to support Jim's Plus and get more work for our guys, because they're obviously at the at the head of the list. So yeah. in, in a sense, what we're going to be doing is setting up a, a system that competes with the likes of these other aggregators. But the very big difference for us is that we are not going to focus on price. Like if you go to somewhere like High Pages, you're after the cheapest price. Well, we're going to say, if you come to Jim's Plus, you only get to pick one person. You can look at the reviews, you can look at the surveys, you only get to pick one. Because what we want is a system that will work really, really well for contractors as well as franchisees. See, if you ring gyms, you get one person. We will not give you a second person because we will not compete on price. And I think there's quality operators out there who give great service and they want to compete on that and not be the cheapest. So we're also doing on this, Andy, just going from tech side with the social stuff for um, Patrick and Andy on this one. We're actually looking at doing a Facebook AI chatbot which will basically mean a client will be able to fully interact in real time at 24 hours with Facebook Messenger directly and they'll be available via websites and we can take those AI learnings and extend it to making better conversational mm -hmm. flows. So we're actually looking at that. We're actually going to be talking to Jim about that tomorrow about selecting a vendor for that. So AI chatbot for via Messenger is what we're looking at doing and we hopefully found a vendor who can do it. So it might not be too far away and we'll implement it on all the Jim's group social pages to hopefully combat that sort of stuff. We, we, are, we are very heavily invested in IT and gyms. We spend close to $2 million a year 
on IT development. And Jim's is not that big a company. It's a huge part of our payroll is directly on IT and improving our systems and improving our websites and improving our software and compliance and all kinds of things. So we're massively invested in that. That's an awesome point, Patrick, because I think the stat was like, I think it was like 80% of people or something like that who interact with people on, with companies on social media want, to, want an answer within 30 minutes. Mm. So if it's out of hours, um, people can't respond. So we, the whole idea is to have a bot to have that 24-hour interaction so people can get information via uh, machine learning uh, to help them with booking or buying a franchise, that sort of stuff. So I'll run out some more comments here. So Jim's mowing Bay of Plenty Hawks Base tuned in again. So evening to you. Um, we'll go down here. Matt Bagley, uh, Bagley from Canada is tuned in again. Hey, mates. Hi, hey, Matt. Man. Thanks for tuning in. We, so, had, we had a couple of your compatriots. Actually, we had one lady from Canada across the training this week, which is great. Yeah, from Canada. So all the mowing ones from Canada will do fly here and do the training, won't they? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Which is it's, it's, it's an investment, but it's the, the course here is very, very good, and we want people to understand the culture and the, the basis of gyms. So it's great to have our Canadians. Yeah. Uh, brothers and sisters over here. That's awesome. So Angus, Angus Hilardi, this is a really cool comment. Hey, Jim, into the future, when you add a new division, would you consider online teaching to help new small businesses understand the roles of Jim's businesses and also refresh their skills in that area? Yeah, we are. So you're talking about for Jim's people or for independence. Um, Might we, be a bit of both maybe, I don't know. Yeah. One of the things we are looking for with this Jim's Plus idea is, is to get people from... Um, independents who can't afford a franchise currently to give them a little bit of a, a leg up to get started in business, including some basic training. And the idea, and, and that would include some online training as well, which we're setting up in various ways. The, the idea hopefully eventually is to be able to shift them across into gyms. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Training, is, training is there. Yeah, training is there, but also think stuff like this, you can ask Jim anything you want, you know, yeah. any type of business question you want. Angus is the way to go. We, um, we have a very, we're very open about our, our business secrets. We, we just believe that we'll tell anybody, anything to anybody, and, and it, it pays off. Some people use some of our ideas to succeed in business for themselves, which is great, mm. but a lot of people actually ask us about things and they get advice and then they're so impressed that they actually come across and eventually become part of our, of our family, which is really good. It's a, it's a great comment and question and also um, there's a lot of videos on the YouTube channel with Jim, Success mm. in Business Series, so hit the Jim Script YouTube there's channel. A, there's a lot yeah. of information you can find about business. My books, for example, that you can you yeah. can order. Um, well, that, that's from... Cat, from this um, one's on the website for free. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a free book and there's an yeah. audio version. Just audio, for, yeah, we got the audio files the other day, so yeah. there'll be an audio book version of that, so you can just whip it on your phone. There's some very good practical training in that. If I was not me, I would be reading that book for sure because I want to know, and I love reading business books, so if you can get hold of anything at all. So there's a lot of information out there. The funny thing about it is that people's idea about business training is all about, um, you know, cash flows and business plans and stuff. And I, I'm not saying that's not important, but in my experience, what really counts is character. It counts things like how quickly can you get back to a client? How passionate are you about doing a great job? How how much do you enjoy what you do? How, how resilient are you in the face of, you know, setbacks? And these things actually are mainly what seem to lead to success. And, and we, we try and teach these and, and encourage them. And so if you, if you have a look at a book like one of these books here and you can see someone like myself who had it pretty hard and you can get encouraged and you can get inspiration. And that's, that's, that's what it's for. It's great comment, Angus. I'll run through some more stuff here. Jim's memes gone. Jim's ride sharing. I think they were looking at something like that. Jim's taxis or Jim's ride sharing or Jim's cars a while ago. Yeah, we had a sort of something looking at yeah. the, uh, the the limo type thing. Yeah. So Matt Bagley's gone. Need to start Jim's fishing charter service. That was probably in relation to the Jim's Island back in the day. <laughs> that, that was a good. That was yeah. A good... That was a good one. Yeah. But see, here he goes. Hi, hi, Jim and Joel. How many hours of actual work do you put in the day slash week? As someone attempting to start a business, I would love to know where the bar is set. So maybe in the early days, how much hours did you actually put in? Oh, well, obviously when I was starting out in business, you know, 60 hours a week or whatever. I, I don't know, really. Um, it's it's something difficult to know what's work actually these days. If I go and have lunch or dinner with my franchise, the trainees, is that work or is it just for fun? It's kind of like how you define it. But mm. I don't think you have to work incredibly hard. It's like um, Shane was, was telling us last week, this is a guy who knocks off at 2.30 and is making $4,500 a week. Actually, he told me somewhat better that, that um, last week. 
you can make very good money with working limited hours. It's sometimes you can actually waste a lot of time. You can be you can be working and doing things that aren't very productive. And sometimes, you know, ten minutes of clear thinking is is better than than two hours of actual slogging. One of the um, examples I often give to with franchisees is that. You know they're often willing to work an extra hour and eat and to make more money. But in actual fact, the best investment they can make in their business all year is to come to a meeting, which might take a couple of hours once every six weeks. But in that meeting, they can learn things and they get inspiration and they find out from success with what they're doing. So the the best people are actually not necessarily those who are putting ridiculous hours in. But the people who are always open to new ways of thinking and talking. And often learning more about business is better than spending more hours in the business because the hourly rates vary incredibly. I and mean, we've got low, we've got people who are struggling to make you know twelve hundred dollars a week, um, and there's people who are making you know millions of dollars a year, and, and, and their hourly rates are in the hundreds of dollars per hour, and they've got workers and all kinds of things. So it's 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 not you have to put effort into it. But it's it's more important to think about what you're doing and see if you can be more efficient. And one of the things I always do is I'm always looking at ways to do things quick, more quickly, more efficiently. Like I, I have my email system, and Haydar was I was going to put Haydar still on there, but he was he had 180 things in his his email bo- inbox, and I was saying, okay, this is how you deal with them. Start with the top, deal with it, do something with it. Next one, don't read it twice. Deal with it, deal with it, deal with it. Go through, be super efficient with whatever you do, and that way you can actually do incredibly well. The other thing too is, and I know this is long-winded, but it's not always a matter of working well, it's a matter of doing things that help you to have the right psychological attitude. Like if, for example, making sure you're fit. If, you, if your job isn't too fit, a half an hour of exercise is the best work you can do all day because your mind is so clear. You're getting enough sleep, having a good family relationship, spending time with your, with your partner, with your kids, that's incredibly important. It's important personally, but it's also important for your for your psychological well-being. And, and people fail in business. One of the major sources of failure that can hit even the worst ones is a, is a relationship breakdown. You know, mm. like mm. somebody's wife walks out because he's not paying attention to her or something. It's so in a sense, I'd say, don't think you have to work ridiculous hours, but always have time for the things that matter. Always have time for exercise, have time for your family, have time for doing things that you enjoy, having time for relaxing, having time for sleep, having time for going to church for someone like myself. These things all matter. Having time for your friends too. Don't, don't just think the whole is about work. And I, I'm not actually an incredibly hardworking person. I, I don't exactly know how many hours I work a week. I think about work a lot, but I don't. But I, you know, I, 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 drew, I drove my sister, my um, daughter, to her dentist appointment today. She's got to get braces, and and you know, I was, I was talking with her in the car and stuff, and that was during the day. So I think being a well-rounded individual is probably mm. just a quick little summation. But that's a really great question. Thanks for tuning in with that one. That's and awesome. money isn't the end anyway, too. I, I'd say um, one, one of my favourite sayings: "No other success can compensate for failure in the home." I don't think much of a life where people have got a huge amount of money but their family life's messed up and their kids are useless i mean what is the point of it and, and they've got no friends and they've got nothing it's all money money is not a much of a goal in, in itself so that's a great question and a good answer as well hmm. so matt's gone thanks for the jim's jobs update which is awesome oh yeah he's good. happy with that you'll see some real, really yeah. good stuff coming this year matt we are going to make jim's jobs awesome so fantastic I'll, so i'll try and fly through a few things here thanks for tuning in so there's 52 people tuning in still which is great give us a comment like or uh share we awesome. can't be too long with my kids are ordering yep. pizza so and you got dinner right you got pizza coming yeah. i'll try and run through as much here and maybe do one more question then jim will announce at the end who's one so harry roberts has gone the one true church of jim we've seen that one a bit on the memeing stuff kt choi has gone jim's tours jossie brock's gone hi jim and joel hi jossie jason says thanks john idem is tuned in again hey gentlemen hope you both well thanks for tuning in john Shane's bag it's provided some value here. I always try to ring leads as soon as I get the text from head office. Yeah. If I ring within one to five minutes, I get the job. Yeah, good man, no, Shane. He's, 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 yeah. Listen, learn from this there guy. You go. I can get him trained doing his training <laughs> at head office before too long. The Stuart Rainbow's tuned in again, so he's one of our main franchises. Hi, Stuart. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Matthew Schwartz. Stuart's in, Stuart's in the family. He married uh, 
uh, Jill Stallworthy's daughter. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. right, that's correct. She changed her name to Rebecca Stallworthy, Rebecca, Rebecca Rainbow. So Stuart's a great entrepreneur and he's been with us for a long time. So Ahmed says hi here. Now this is an interesting one from Aaron. I want to ask, we'll try one on this one. Aaron's come back and he's gone, say, so we pay advertising costs to our franchisors for leads and then you resell them again. So I mm. believe he means the lead, unserviced leads going through to go blitz, which Yeah, is we do. Happens. Well, look, there's, there's two reasons for that. First of all, if it, and it's, it's, a, it's a fundamental of retail that if you can't give something, what you should do as a good retailer is you go down and you point out, well, sorry, we can't help you, but go down and, and, and go to the shop down the road and they'll help you out. Now, people do that not because they're altruistic, but because it actually creates a better impression. So every time we say to a client, sorry, we can't help you, full stop, that's damage. That's less reason to call us. But if we say, sorry, I can't help you, but we have a contractor who can help you, and most of them are giving good service, that's a positive. They're more likely to ring us. Now, on top of that advantage, down the track a bit, when we sold enough clients to our competitors, um, apart from that, we might be able to hold to draw them into gyms, which is part of the idea. But the real payoff is we can use the money of that, support the site to give extra work to our franchisees. So what we're doing is selling jobs we can't handle, giving customers a better experience, but then using that to find work for our franchises when they do need it. Now, to me, that's a win-win game. That's a really good question, Aaron, and thanks for putting that one on there. It's a tough one, but it's a, it's a, great, it's a great question. We appreciate you taking the time. I'll read one more from here. So every comment or question that we don't get to in this one, there's a lot of detailed ones which I see down there, which we probably won't have time to get to because Jim's got to have some pizza with his family. I will put on the piece of paper like I do here and I read them at the start every week. So every question that is left in here, I'll put on here and I do answer this to Jim. So all of these have been answered except for one more which we'll finish on. So Adrian Petkovic has gone, hey, it's, hey Jim, it's Adrian Petkovic here from A&M Mobile Dog Poop Cleaning Services. I just wanted to ask you, what is harder, to run a business that everyone is doing or a business that no one has thought of but you have to find out the best way to run it? Question mark. No, my personal opinion is do a business that everybody else is doing and do it okay. better. Because you don't really know the, the, the demand for a business. Even even things like um, you know, like people like Google and, and Facebook, they weren't innovative ideas. People were running social media, social um, networks before Facebook, and they were running search engines before Google. They just went and did it better. So that's, that's what I would say. Find something that somebody else is doing. Now, if you're in a sunrise industry which is growing like um, uh, – digital, for example, um, or um, in anything, or security is another example. If, you, in, if you're in an industry which is growing all the time, it's easier to make a go of it. But fundamentally, there's nothing, what we do in gyms is very innovative in the way we do things, but the kinds of businesses we're in are very ordinary, you know, mowing, cleaning, dog wash, antennas, handyman, car cleaning, bookkeeping, computer services, Building inspections, they're all very well established industries. We, we're just doing a bit better. So, thanks to everyone for tuning in. Um, we'll leave Jim there because I know he's got to get a pizza. And as I said, the comments and questions you left on the site are great. We're not ignoring them. It's basically, I'm just trying to go through an order and get to as much as we can. I do write them all down on a piece of paper, and these are the ones that we'll start with next week. So, if you've left a comment or question in there, I'll put it on here and we'll start with the first next week. So, tune in again on Thursday at seven o'clock. And Jim will, will get to that. Definitely will get to anyone who's left it there. Uh, thanks to everyone who left a comment, question, or like. We much appreciate it. And we'll be back again 7 o'clock next week. Now, Jim, who, which of the questions that came tonight do you, did you like the best or did you want to give the book to? I like, like the book? one about science and religion. So. All right. <laughs> that's, that's new. So choice of which one you'd like. Did you like the uh, this is my book or this is the Jim's book? I had to admit this is a better um, Deal because because basically you can <laughs> that's true you can read this for free yes, right? exactly you have to pay right. for it. but whichever yeah. you, whichever you like let us know and we'll post it out to you so I'll be a signed book so um Samantha if you can DM us or I'll get onto you via our messenger gives you details I'll get you to sign it and we'll post it it's out a, to you it's a good read this book it's it's um a little bit embarrassing and sometimes <laughs> some of the stuff people say about me and I don't but it's very it's colourful I suppose there's a lot of stuff I I didn't know about when I when I I, I first read it. I was like, wow, people did that. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah, it's quite, yeah it's quite, it's a massive history. But mm -hmm. what we'll do next week, we'll do another one of the Q&As on Thursday at 7 o'clock. All your comments and questions that were left that I didn't get to, I promise you I'll write them down on the bit of paper and we'll, we'll get them answered next week by Jim. Um, and we'll also do another book giveaway next week. So the best comment or question which we bank up and Jim picks, we'll do another signed book and uh, we'll post that out to whoever is next week. We'll do the same thing again. 
Thank you for everyone who tuned in. It's been a lot of engagement on here. We've been watching down the side. It's been awesome. And Jim appreciates all the comments and questions as yeah, well. Yeah, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot of fun, this kind of stuff. I, yeah. I, I reckon it's good. So we'll see you next week. Make sure you subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel, which is just Jim's group. Give us a subscribe. There's a lot of content from Jim there, which is great for a lot of business. Our Facebook page, Jim's group, obviously, which you're on, or Jim Penman's official one, which is Jim Penman official. Instagram is Jim underscore Penman, and his Twitter is Jim Penman too. So... Thank you for tuning in. We much appreciate the engagement and we'll see you next week for another book giveaway and some more Q&A. Thanks, Jim.